This is Sydney's northern beaches. It's a playground for sun lovers. Where every day is a celebration. And that keeps the cops busy. Don't push a cop, mate. Just go home. So when things get too hot... OK, listen, it's a licensed premises. You need to leave. We're heading code red to Narrabeen as well. We'll be five. Can you get me your ID, please? Not, not good. These cops keep it cool. Pretty crazy. The reports are he's on ice. We also get an ambulance here. I'm just going to go check on him and I'll update you. Please, all I'm asking you to do is go home. Hey, like that again, then you will receive a fine and go. Welcome to their world. And blow, blow. Tonight, blow. it's not difficult, you just blow. A young backpacker is struggling with the simplest instructions. So you get three attempts at this. On the third attempt, it's a fail, you're arrested for that one. He saw the punches being thrown. Things get rough in the taxi ride from hell. You are under arrest for assaulting the taxi driver. I'm under arrest? Yes. Do I need to say it again? And just when they thought they'd seen it all. It's just an iPad. Bloody hell, she's on an iPad. She's gone. That's tonight on Beach Cops. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, apparently five guys in pirate costumes uh, uh, damaging the wharf near McDonald's. There's already a couple right, of cars right. a bit closer than us, so... No, this looks like pirates. Are you actually serious? I'm just trying to eat McDonald's. It's another Saturday night down at Manly. And as usual, too much booze has a lot to answer for. Watch out for the vomit behind you. Watch the vomit on the floor. Vomit, vomit, vomit. Have some water. Uh, yeah. In Manly, we see people getting too drunk every weekend. Um, mate, oh, I'm just here because I want to make sure he's OK. And our role is to care for them and make sure they get home safely. He chose boom. Yeah. Not being the base, we're gone. And just up the road, Laura and Beck are attending to another grog-related issue. Got a male POI who's been hit in the head. He's bleeding from the head. I think there's another male involved and possibly a female. We've had a few different calls come through, so. But the description of the guy in the fight <laughs> has got the girls baffled. <laughs> it literally says. POI also hit informant in the head. Male POI is wearing no denim shorts. Wearing no denim shorts? Oh, I don't think that's written for me. No. Oh, denim shorts. Oh, I meant to say no shorts. Hello. Hi, how are you going? Um, so when we first got here, there was another crew on scene who were trying to help a victim of an assault. He's been punched in the face and was bleeding, very intoxicated. Wait, I haven't done anything wrong. Oh. Oh. Alright, guys. No, oh, are these your friends? Are, these your... are you friends with him? Yes, I am. No, honestly, what have I done wrong for you to approach me? Police have been trying to give the injured man a lift home, but he's a little confused. Yeah, they're going to take you home. That's all they're trying to do. I just want a glass of water. Like, I haven't done anything wrong to anyone. Can we get him a glass of water? No. Ten minutes later, they've managed to coax him down the stairs. All right, guys, hurry up. Can you take your cousin home? I'm going home. That's OK. Are you all right? I'm going home. Yep. But just when he gets close to the back of the van, he changes his mind. Yeah, he thought he was going to be arrested. He, he wouldn't um, listen to us. We were trying to give him a lift home, but he wouldn't listen. You got nothing else to do tonight. Guys, can you just get off the road for me? You've got their best interest, but it's, I don't. I have no words. <laughs> it's so frustrating. And he shows his appreciation with a little bit of abuse. But no, still, we're, we're the police to persevere. You're not gonna give me a lift, Sammy. You're taking me to DY Cop Station, aren't you? We're not taking you to DY Cop Station. You're going station. with Sammy. Sammy's coming with you. Sammy's coming with me? Yes. Just sit there. You're not being arrested. You've been punched in the mouth, and we want you to take your own. Ah, uh, you need a lot of self-restraint. <laughs> a lot. I mean, we're, we're, You're intoxicated. I know my right. You're intoxicated. Let's go. Come I'm on. not intoxicated. Wait, come on. Ask me to walk in a straight line. Go walk Oi, in a straight line. On. Okay, ask me. Walk in a straight line to the back of the van. He um, was trying to tell me that he wasn't drunk and that he could walk in a straight line, so I tried to get him to walk in a straight line to the back of the van. In that way? Okay. But he, he wasn't fooled by that, <laughs> unfortunately. No, my rights. I've been in a lot of trouble. Oh, I haven't done anything wrong. Let's go home. Let's go home. I haven't done anything wrong. No, Sammy. Home. 
you can walk in freely. You can walk in freely, you're not under arrest. You're not in trouble. And finally, he's in the back of the van. I remember someone punched him in the head. Oh, he was very concerned that he was going back to DY police station. Uh, and he would not believe us that we'd give him a free lift home, which is very rare for us. So he's very lucky. Saturday night. Yeah. I oh, know, I should have come from behind the tree or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sneak up on you next time, though. Yeah. Just have a little early look at Mona Vale and see what the general feel of the night's going to be. Jeff and Dave are patrolling in an unmarked car, and Jeff has just noticed a driver texting next to them. Texting? There she is. There she is. You can see it in the reflection. It's just an iPad. Bloody hell, she's on an iPad. Yes. Yeah, baby. Yep, she's gone. She's reading, like, emails or something on her iPad. Well, we're just driving along and just noticed the young girl in the car to our right uh, was looking down towards a lap. She was clearly distracted by something. I'd have to stop her right here. And you could actually see clearly in the reflection in the window beside her that she was scrolling through some messages on our iPad. How you going, ma'am? Um, are you aware why we stopped you? Oh. Yeah, you're using your iPad. Yeah, when you're driving along. I asked the young lady if she knew why we'd pulled her over, and straight away she said, yes, I was um, talking to my boyfriend, which is, uh, explains the messages she's scrolling through. Well, you understand how, how dangerous it is, especially an a, uh, iPad. I mean, we could see the reflection of your iPad, you reading it there in the window. It wasn't very safe, was it? I told the young lady then the, uh, how dangerous it was to use her iPad, uh, the same as using a mobile phone. She puts herself and other road users at risk, uh, which she seemed to understand. The front one's come off by looks of things. But texting's not the only thing she's done. She's also missing a pee plate off the front of her car. She doesn't have a spare one. Being the front one, I'll probably give her the benefit of the doubt. And yeah. if she goes and gets it um, put on straight away, yeah. probably go to the servo or something. Yeah. When I spoke to her, she's just come up with some sort of excuse that her boyfriend's in hospital, saying that she was just getting off the phone. Yeah. She wasn't just getting off the phone, she was still using it as we would. Uh, she still needs to um, pull to the side of the road. It's a very unsafe practice. Um, as my offsider, did he come and tell you about the uh, P plate on the front? Yeah. What's going to happen is I've taken your details, as you know, and I'm going to write an infringement notice out for you and send that to you in the mail. That's a fine. OK? All right. See you later. Stay here and I'll just take yeah. your details down. No, what'd you say? I couldn't stop because my bike wouldn't stop. Your bike doesn't go over 20, mate. How could you not stop? <laughs> I'm going to eat pizza. It's a wet night on the northern beaches. I'm soaking wet. Me too. And along with the rain, the jobs keep pouring in. Now beach cops Leanne and Beck have been called to a brawl in the street. Do you reckon I should go no sirens yeah. or sirens? No sirens. It's a blue job. Just got a call from the station saying a taxi driver and a passenger are physically fighting. So we're about one minute off the job and I guess we'll see what it is when we get there. Yeah, yeah. Super sun. Calm down, calm down. What happened? Just tell me what happened. Just tell me what, just tell me how what happened. He started being a very aggressive. Okay. He took my glasses off, punched me from the back. They've managed to break up the fight. Is there a fight? Did he hit you? Did he hit you? But now they need to work out exactly what happened. Do you need an ambulance at all? No, for your no, head? No, You're yeah, okay? Is it cool. sw swollen or anything? Yeah, I'm cool. You're okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> So basically we got a call today that there was a taxi driver being assaulted. So we've obviously come straight here and we've been hailed down by a taxi driver who's pointed out a male to us and said that he's just assaulted him. So we've obviously stopped that male straight away and also um, had a chat with a taxi driver to work out what's happened. While Beck talks to the cabbie, Liang gets the other side of the story. Yeah, he's just alleged that he's, he's punched him in the head. The PO I said, I booked a cab for four people. Um, I got in and another random person, which was his friend, got in the cab. Taxi driver didn't speak English. 
Um, the POI stated that he was racist and he didn't appreciate people didn't speak English in Australia. So he was swearing at him and told him he was an effing whatever. Uh, the taxi driver pulled over here and told him to get out. He got out of the cab, opened the door. This is where the story differs. The POI said that he got out and he was like, whatever. But then the taxi driver says that the POI got out with the open door, went over to the taxi and just started pummeling into him. The stories differ a lot. Did you hear something or did someone yell something at you? Or... But Leanne's just found someone who saw the whole thing. Mum was leaving to go home and she saw it. Your mum. She called me to go outside to go. Uh, We've got a witness and his mother heard the person of interest say, I'm going to kill you. So she told her son who came out and saw the punches being thrown. Without your statement, it just makes it really hard to piece it together. So thank yeah. you for this. So basically from now we've got a we've got the statement from the victim. We've also got a, uh, a witness who saw the whole thing. So that's really, really good for us. You are under arrest for assaulting the taxi driver. I'm under arrest? Yes. Do I need to say it again? The, the person of interest, I put him under caution and arrested him. So I gave him to move on from the area. Um, we're still gathering evidence and make sure that everything matches the victim in the witness statement. Once I got that, it's bulletproof and we'll just charge him. That's a good job. That was good. Good catch. It's good that he was still there. Yeah. It's Sky. <laughs> we're going to go have a sticky bake at Oaks Ave. Maybe his guy's already been there. Perfect, we'll meet you there. Perfect, we'll meet you there. See you soon. Bye. Sky and Andrew are liaising with another team of officers to check on a squatter's house in the area. We come back here pretty much every every shift and we either find people here using or people coming, buying and selling drugs from the location. Loads, police. Person home. No person's home. No. No regulars. There's no one there. There's no but they have there. found a few interesting items. There was a couple of push bikes in there that we believe stolen or unlawfully obtained. Scratch door. Probably stolen. And they've put the value of the bike at about four and a half thousand dollars. Four and a half. They seize one of the bikes for further investigation. Pages 4-6. But then Sky notices a familiar face across the road. Can I just have a chat with you, Aaron? A woman who was yeah. cautioned last time they were there. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Nothing. I was just watching you guys. Watching us? Yeah. Have you been coming back here since we last saw you here? No. No? I'm just going to search through your bag. Is there anything in there that shouldn't be in there? Last time I was here, she was also present at the location. Uh, she's been given two warnings about trespassing at this location. I've known her in the past to use drugs and have drugs on her. This bag that you had last time and this little bag that you had I've last time. Stuff I've got from the health food stop. Shop. That? Yeah. That? Oh, yeah. So what, what are they selling clear plastic bags at the health food shop? Um, well, it's from the health food shop. It's stuff that, like, um, it's like a steroid for your lungs. What health food shop? I don't know. I've got a friend to get it. She claimed she gets uh, steroids from a health food shop, but her friend buys them for her, so I don't think that's a <laughs> true story. But, yeah, there was no, nothing found on, on a search of her other than an empty empty bag. <laughs> you know you're not allowed oh, yeah, here, I'm don't you? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely Because if I come back yeah. another day and I see you there, I will... I will charge you with trespass, OK? Yeah, thank you. I don't want to see you back down in Oaks Avenue for the rest of the day, OK? Stay out of trouble. Yeah. All right, see ya. Yeah, she ran out the back door last time. Back at the station, Sky and Andrew have found out where the bike came from. OK, the good news is, turns out the bike was stolen. We've managed to <laughs> track down the owner of the bike. It's a guy up at Narrabeen, so it's not far from here. And the man that was uh, squatting at the premises, he's been charged with defence. I can't stop. Get you to count out loud one at 10 for me. One, two, oh, they're three. coming, they're coming. Let's just wait. Any alcohol tonight? I have had a beer. Yeah. Just the one. It's 10 p.m. on a Saturday, and an RBT operation is running hot. Just bit for you. He's just going to be out the and the local paper has just revealed that the Northern Beaches is the drink driving capital of New South Wales. Have you done one of these before? 
So far, no driver has gone over the limit. But Stephen has just pulled over a young man who seems to be having trouble following simple directions. Blow. And that's suspicious. Blow. Harder. Harder. He was travelling behind the taxi and he was indicated to enter the RBT site. The taxi's entered and he's failed to enter. He's driven down past and stopped level with the testing officers but still on the road. Harder. Harder. He should have pulled into the breath testing site like everyone's indicated. He's not followed this, the car in even though the sergeant's been directing him in. And he's even finding it tough to follow the breath test yeah, instructions. It's not difficult, you just blow. Blow proper hard or not? Yeah, blow proper hard. Just got to let you know, you get three attempts at this. On the third attempt, it's a fail or refuse, you're arrested for that one. Yeah, you've got to blow. It's a like breath test. Like Breathe in deep, lips around the tube, and blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and stop. Yes. Good. Grab the tube, grab the tube. All right. At this point, I'll just let you know that you're under arrest. Yeah. I'll just, yeah. Gentleman's failed the roadside breath test, so we'll be taking in the RBT truck for a breath analysis. This is a roadside screener, but you need to be, you need to be something underneath. What's the uh, 050? This guy's from England and doesn't seem to know anything about our drink driving laws. Yeah, so you're well over, mate. So there's another device in here, instrument. Yeah. We'll do the breath test on the instrument, and the basis on that result will be based on what we do. Come on up, anyway. Ah, uh, home, I'd probably be fine driving home like this. Well, probably not, mate. What size drinks are we drinking? Oh, it's just some schooners. How many schooners? Let's say four, that's five, yeah, five, five. So five beers in an hour, that's a reasonable rate, isn't it? It was like the first two, uh, first two were pretty rapid and the last two were just sipping. So with five schooners in an hour under his belt... Lips are in it and blow. Blow, blow, blow. Keep going, keep going. He might regret those last few beers. OK, the instruments analyzed a sample of breath and return a reading of 0 0.131, so that's in the mid-range. So we've just conducted the breath analysis. It puts him in the mid-range. So he's going to be charged and will appear at Manly Local Court, and his driving privileges as a visitor are suspended. And back home, he'd be well over the limit too. No, I did not think I'd be on the limit. I had like three or four pints max. He's visibly affected by the alcohol and he'd consumed a large amount in a short period of time. It's frustrating that people are still doing it and it's frustrating that they think that they can drink five schooners of beer in an hour and they're still fine to drive. So now he knows if you booze, you lose in the land down under. Yeah, just the keys being snapped off. In a suburban street in Dy, a car has crashed into three parked cars. But I hide that big light. Oh, right, bang. Bang. The neighbours are out, but the driver of the car is nowhere to be seen. So the barrel is all intact, um, although there is a broken key in the ignition. So it does appear that the driver may have uh, snapped the keys off in a hurry to run away. And it seems the driver may have done a runner for a reason. This has been reported stolen at 11.38. OK. He lives just around the corner. So we're looking at the fact that he's probably pranked it. Run back home and report it stolen. stolen. Yeah, sure. Uh, the incident sounds a little bit suspicious, um, considering the owner reported the vehicle stolen at 11.38 and the witness heard it um, about 15 minutes before that. Um, so we've sent another vehicle up to the owner's house to have a chat with him. Oh, hi, Tony. My name's Constable Cohen from DY Police. How are you? While Michael breaks the bad news to the um, others... Yeah, it's undrivable at the moment. Was it insured at all? Word comes through that the owner of the car has been found, but it's not what officers are expecting. Oh! <laughs> so she came out in a minute driving. So, whilst police were interviewing um, the registered owner of the Blue Holden Apollo, um, he was claiming that he wasn't driving the motor vehicle at the time, but then his wife came out and made full emissions in regards to driving the vehicle. She said she just came down the road and uh, lost control of the motor vehicle, um, and since then they'd fled uh, from the location. She did state that she had um, drunk one and a half glasses of wine, so it is quite obvious um, through looking at her behaviour. Unfortunately for everyone, this driver has no licence, and that means no insurance. She was driving whilst suspended, so she'll be getting a charge for that as well, no doubt. More likely a negligent driving as well. 
That's mainly cool, sir. You're in your undies, you're in your undies. No onion, no, she's very picky. So you've been gardening tonight? Date night, come on. <laughs> Not right here. Did we all good? This never happened. You know what's going to be terrible? Killing my dad. I'm going to be ground. <laughs> See, Friday nights. You never know. Might be um, famous for all the wrong reasons.